Hello and welcome everyone to the second semester of the second year of your study. In this semester, we will be studying oral histology. And in this lecture, I will give you a brief introduction into oral histology. My name is Dr. Hiba al -Zir, and I hope you will enjoy this course with me and with my other colleagues. This course is divided into a theoretical course and a practical course. In the theoretical part, you will be taking 14 lectures and two exams, a midterm exam, which is accounted for 40% of the final grade, and a final exam, which is accounted for 60% of the final grade. In the practical part, uh, you will be taking 14 labs with three exams. The first and the second are accounted for th each 30% of the final grade and the final is accounted for 40% of the grade. You will be uh, given handouts, uh, also the slides with the recordings will be uploaded for you. I will uh, recommend some reference books at the end of the, this lecture. And of course, uh, it would be good for you to look up some histological sections on the website to train yourself to read histological sections. So, histology is to study tissue microscopic appearance. As you remember, last semester, we studied the oral tissues on the oral cavity anatomy, which means we studied the macroscopic appearance of the oral tissues. In this semester, we'll take these tissues under the microscope and see the components or the cells that actually um, make this tissue. Why do we study oral histology? There is a strong connection between the histology of oral tissues, their structure, and their function and physiology. Also, understanding how this tissue developed helps us to understand a lot of genetic and systemic diseases that happens to these tissues. Understanding the structure, function, and physiology of oral structures help us to restore these functions uh, in our work as dentists. And understanding the oral diseases and the oral pathology is very, very dependent on understanding the basic anatomy and histology of oral structures. So how are we going to study oral histology together in this semester? First, we will talk briefly about the gross anatomy of each tissue, its location. Then we will be discussing the physical properties of these tissues. As an example, the hard tissues of a tooth has different physical properties. The enamel is different than dentine, it's different than cementum, which means when we try to restore these tissues uh, in our work as dentists, we should be using materials that exhibit as much as possible the same properties of each tissue we are trying to restore. Then we will talk a little bit about the chemical composition of these tissues of course, for the same aims. And then we will be discussing the histological sections or the histology of these tissues. Of course, we have two kinds of tissues in the oral cavity, the hard tissues and the soft tissues. The hard tissues can be studied using uh, two different kinds of sections, the ground section and the decalcified section. As we can see here, there is a difference between these two sections. The ground section method burn the organic substance where preserve the inorganic substance. As we can see here, the enamel, which is the hardest uh, tissue of the tooth, is composed of 96% of inorganic material, which is actually preserved in the ground section. 
while the inorganic uh, substance, which is the pulp, is burned out. In contrary, in the decalcified section, the enamel, which is supposed to be here covering the dentine, is dissolved. The inorganic material is dissolved and the organic substance remains. The dentine, as uh, having a high organic um, percentage, organic material percentage in it, in its components, it, uh, we can see it in this section. Also, as you can see, the pulp is preserved. You can see it in this section. Which oral structures are we going to discuss in this semester? First, we will be discussing the, the uh, tissues of the teeth. The enamel, the dentine, the cementum, and the pulp. Then we will move to the uh, teeth supporting system, the periodontium, which is uh, composed of the gingiva, the alveolar bone, the periodontal ligament, and the root cementum. Afterwards, we will talk about other oral structures like the jaw bones, the, temp the temporomandibular joint, the oral mucosa and submucosa. Of course, we're gonna uh, see under the microscope all the blood vessels and nerves that supply all the, the structures I have mentioned. And we will talk about the salivary glands. Also, we will talk about the embryology of all of the above mentioned structures. We can divide these oral structures into hard tissues and soft tissues. The hard tissues are the enamel, the dentine, the cementum, the alveolar bone, the jaw bones, and the temporomandibular joint. The soft tissues are the pulp, the periodontal ligament, the oral mucosa and submucosa, and the salivary glands. Now I will give you a brief introduction into each of these tissues. And remember, each of these tissues will be discussed in detail in uh, the following lectures. So in, in the tooth, in any tooth, we have a crown and a root. The crown is this area which we see above the gingiva and the root, which is actually inside the alveolar bone. Inside the tooth, we have the pulp chamber And the hard tissues of the tooth, as I have already mentioned, are the enamel, which we see by eye, by naked eye, the dentine, which is under the enamel and covers all the tooth in the root and in the crown. But the hard tissue, which covers the dentine and the roots, is called cementum. The enamel is the, the most highly mineralized tissue in the whole body. As I mentioned, uh, it has 96% inorganic material. It's non-vital, it's insensitive, and cannot be regenerated. The dentine forms the bulk of the tooth. It's a rigid but elastic tissue, so it's ideal to support enamel. It's covered by enamel in the crown area and the cementum in the root area. It is vital and it is sensitive and it is repairable also. The pulp, which is the soft uh, tissue inside, uh, the soft connective tissue inside the tooth, as we can see here nourishes, innervates, and repairs dentine. It is contained in the crown and, and in the root, as you can see in the figure. The two supporting structures, as I mentioned, is called periodontium, which consists from four components. A gingiva, 
which is the part of the mucosa that forms a coral a collar around the tooth as we can see here the root cementum which covers the dentine of the root the periodontal ligament it's a ligament that binds the cementum into the fourth component which is the alveolar bone as you can see it here in the figure it is represented by these white fibers the gingiva has two regions the attached gingiva and the free gingiva as the name implies the free gingiva is not attached to anything it's a free and the attached gingiva is attached to the underlying alveolar bone the cementum is a calcified tissue uh, as i have already uh, uh, earlier mentioned it can be repaired and can be regenerated periodontal ligament is a dense fibrous connective tissue that attaches the tooth to the alveolar bone as you can see here The alveolar bone is the part of the maxilla or the mandible that supports the tooth or the teeth. The outer and inner cortical plates, as we can see here, the alveolar bone, this is the socket of the tooth, and the alveolar bone is a process from the maxilla or the mandible that have the sockets inside them. From outside and inside, there is a thin cortical plates of bone and these types of bones are going to be discussed in details in the future each socket is separated by the adjacent socket by what we call interdental septa it's a special kind of cancellous bone sometimes it's cortical we will talk about it also in details the maxilla and the mandible as I have discussed a minute ago, the alveolar bone is this bone, this process that is that is containing the teeth. It has the sockets inside. But this bone is called the maxilla. And this bone is called the mandible. We will discuss them both in details. The temporomandibular joint is the only joint in the oral cavity it's a synovial articulation and we will uh, actually discuss that in details later and it's uh, the, the articulating surfaces of this joint are the mandible and the cranium the oral mucosa represents the lining of the oral cavity. It consists of oral epithelium and the underlying connective tissue, the lamina propria, and there is a basement membrane in between. We will discuss each of these items in details. We will give you the definition and see, see how it does look under the microscope. Between the gingiva and the, or the uh, oral mucosa, we can see this line between the attached gingiva and the oral mucosa, it's called the mucogingival junction. The oral submucosa is a layer of loose fatty or glandular connective tissue that depends on its location and the kind of the uh, oral mucosa above it. This layer contains major blood vessels and nerves supplying the mucosa and separating it from underlying bones and muscles, as we can see here. In this figure, it's composed of fatty cells. Sometimes it can be glandular tissue or connective tissue. Finally, we'll be talking about the salivary glands. There is three pairs of major salivary glands and 600 to 1,000 minor salivary glands in the oral cavity. 
the major salivary glands are the parotid gland, the submandibular gland, and the sublingual gland. So, in conclusion, it's important to understand the normal structure, development, and function of oral structures in order to understand the nature of pathologies faced in clinical practice. I would recommend it that you can take a look at slides in the textbook and in the internet because this will help you to train yourself on reading histological slides and interpreting them. The references that I will uh, personally recommend to you is the Berkowitz Oral Anatomy, Histology and Embryology. It's found in the bookshop. The uh, Orban's Oral Histology and Embryology. Uh, it's not in the bookshop, but you can buy it uh, online. And uh, Nancy Stinkat's Oral Histology. Um, I found the Orban's Oral Histology uh, explanation um, more easy to understand. It's written in a very um, simple way, but the illustrations found in the Perkovitz book is uh, much colorful and um, easier to interpret and to read. The histological slides are much better in the Perkovitz. So I wish uh, this is a picture of both of the books. The Perkovitz here and the Orban's Oral Histology and Embryology. Feel free to read from any of these. Of course, the slides and the recordings are available. And uh, my office hours and the syllabus will be handed to you. In case you have any questions, you can come into my office hours or you can send me an email. Thank you for staying with me for this lecture and I'll see you in next lecture.